just came up on deck to discover this local boat has decided to grab a bird's eye view of one of the reefs here. As you can see, he's stuck and he now has the assistance of uh, at least one boat. I think another one's coming in to join him possibly. Now these reefs are pretty clearly marked and in fact, even though it's raining, you can see them quite clearly. Uh, the satellite images show them clearly and it's even on avionics as well. I just hope the reef is okay. Well, we've been having some fun whilst in Belatung, but of course we have a few boat jobs to do as well. Unfortunately, these get neglected sometimes because of the video editing, which, you know, can get in the way, but um, today I'm having a day off the computer, so I'm just going around doing a few jobs. One thing that we noticed when we last did a night passage was that our stern light, our navigation light, was starting to play up. And uh, it wasn't until we got in and I checked the next day that we actually lost our port light as well. Now the trickler at the top is not working because I've got to let, get Liz up the mast to change the bulb and as you can possibly see from this anchorage in Bellating, it's not particularly steady so I'm not happy putting her up the mast when it's moving. Unfortunately in Bellating town there is nowhere to buy navigation lights uh, so I've had to improvise and uh, after scouting around the town I ended up putting um, an array of LED bulbs in place of the fitting because the fittings they're so old they've completely corroded so I'll just quickly show you what I've done so I think I think these are aqua signal but they don't have a logo on them like aqua signal does but it could just be because they're so old the idea is is that uh, you slide this thing across to lock it in place I've just unlocked it the whole unit slides up like so and then underneath uh, we twist this 90 degrees and pop this out and I'll just show you what I've done with the uh, LEDs. There you go, you can see these uh, the strips of LEDs, like so. So I've managed to stuff four of them in there, and uh, it's difficult to tell what it's like during the day, of course, but uh, when I compare it to the starboard light, which has a normal uh, Bay 15D, is it called, that uh, the bulb, uh, which we normally use for these, um, they look about the same kind of brightness. So I think for the time being, this will do until we can get the proper replacement. By the way, I should add that uh, the next trip up to Savannah Cove is about 300 miles in total. We're hoping to do mainly in day hops. So we, if we do any night crossings, it will literally just be one, maybe two, perhaps long days that take us into the night or where we have to start early in the morning in the dark. So they shouldn't see too much action. So even if they don't last, providing they get us to Savannah in Malaysia where we can get some more stuff mail ordered and sent to us, and by the way, excuse all this drying washing. Uh, we picked it up from the laundrette yesterday and it got rather wet in the dinghy, so Liz has hung it up to dry. Nice day today for it. One other thing that happened last night, at about two, three, four o'clock, stupid o'clock in the morning, we heard an almighty bang. Well, Liz did, and I kind of thought I dreamt it. Anyway, it turns out the dinghy, which we always hoist, had um, dropped, the back end had dropped into the water. Sorry, the front end, so fortunately it wasn't the engine side, but uh, essentially one of the blocks um, sheared and so it fell in the water. So what I've been doing is I've been trying to repair that and I'm now putting some Dyneema reinforcements. I'm also swapping all of the lines that we use to tie the dinghy up with Dyneema. And that's because American McGee very kindly brought over uh, a big roll of the stuff, 100 odd meters. So uh, it's coming really useful and obviously it's very tough. So uh, I've been strengthening things up with that.
Well, as you may be able to see behind me, it's another beautiful evening there. And Liz and I were doing some work on the boat today and we got a message from another yacht who's here. Uh, we met up with him last night. Uh, his name's Keith. And this is the great thing about the sailing community is that I've got to know Keith over the last few months on one of the Facebook sailing forums. And in fact, Keith has been following our path all the way from Sabang, all the way down to Sumatra and has finally caught up with us here in Belatung. And we sent him some waypoints, given him some ideas and suggestions and finally got to meet him for the first time. And it's just one of those nice things is whilst we love hanging out with locals, getting to meet the local people, every now and then it's nice to hook up with a Westerner, have a few beers, chew the fat, do all the, the silly things that you do, like singing bad karaoke together. Anyway, he said, uh, come over here and have a couple of beers at Zach's place. Now, Zach's place, actually run by his dad, Jeff, um, there's an interesting story here. They've recently set up a kind of hostel, well, hotel reservation, I suppose. But what's really interesting is how they came about constructing both the little houses that you stay in and also the little beach uh, bar area as well. So uh, let's go in and see if we can find Zach, Keith and his crew. Here's Hi, the how's it going? I'm Zachary Clayton, nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, this is my dad's spot. Uh, I guess I'm kind of here by default, but um, uh, you're more than welcome to come and explore. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll have a little chat with you, Zach, because uh, I'm very interested in finding out about these wonderful little chalets you've got here. Yeah, no problem. You're more than welcome to follow me if you want to go and view in one so inside one of them. There we go. I was expecting to do this tomorrow, but why not? Let's uh, do it now. We might as well do one today. All right, this is by far our oldest and um, probably best quality one we have here. It's over 100 years old. And these doors and windows here... The wood you cannot find in Billy Tung anymore. Um, these are all the original shutters and stuff, and these shutters weigh at least 20 kilos or 40, 50 pounds each. And then as we go inside, every room has proper air conditioning and hot water. As we step inside, make sure you take your shoes off. It's the tradition around these parts. You can see it's very open, it's very high ceiling. Um, actually, this wood that we see on the ceiling here was my grandmom's house and we uh, took that down as well. All of these houses that we have here are from this island and uh, we did not make them ourselves. We just simply bought them from a family and we took them apart and we brought them here and then we refurbished them. Replaced wood that need replacing. Obviously the roof was one thing that we replaced and the floor. Um, but all these houses were starting to get run down and it was a shame to see them in that kind of state. So we've got a really dangerous mix here, Kiwi, Canadian and Irish. Hello ladies. Hello darling. <laughs> Okay, well this is where we're getting our dinner cooked from. Lovely bunch of ladies. They seem very friendly. And I think somewhere it, my fish is being cooked. Just over there. Hello. <laughs> I think this is my fish being cooked, which I've just ordered. God, man, it smells so good. Yes. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. <laughs> 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 
Well, it was a bit of a heavy night last night, hooking up with uh, the other yachties in the area. <laughs> it's like when we used to play Leaper in elementary school, you know? <laughs> 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 and this morning I thought well I could uh, just walk off this hangover by a lovely walk along the beach as you can see behind me really big thick black cloud huge squall coming on its way this is on the boat currently at anchor it's a nice bright sunshine that side but behind is this thing approaching so we're just going to keep an eye on it it's a bit of a monster I've just made a discovery. I found a mermaid. So we are almost ready to leave Belatung to start heading north. Uh, there's just one last thing that we have to do and that is to clean our bums. Yep, Esper has a rather grotty body. So this morning we've got to go down and give her a good scrape. Now one of the problems that we've got in this anchorage is that it's very windy. So throughout the day the fetch builds and uh, we end up moving quite a bit. So I think it's probably best if we try and do this as quickly as possible first thing in the morning. And we're going to be using a hooker system. No, not that type of hooker. The one that's spelt K-A-H at the end. Something like that. Um, so basically this is a, an, an oil-less compressor which runs off 12 volts. And then we have a very long uh, hose which allows us to go all the way down to the bottom of the boat and as far as the keel. Uh, very simple to set up. So I'll just very quickly show you this and uh, see if we can uh, clean Esper's bum. So this is the compressor. Instruction manual and it's just got uh, two bulldog clips if you get positive and negative and a nice big thick cable 
that allows us to put the compressor in the cockpit and run the cable down to our battery bank at the bottom of the stairs there. On off switch and this particular model is designed to be used by up to two people. So there's a fitting here and a fitting there which has been capped off. These are push fittings which literally just push in like so, turn to lock them, pretty straightforward stuff. And then in this bag we have the hose. Right. First thing you'll see, this is a reservoir. So that just gives you a little bit of extra air just in case the compressor stops running. Also helps feed a regular supply of air once you're down there. Again, it's got the fittings that allow you to just push on. And we've got two hoses. One's an extension and one runs to the compressor. Again, same push type fittings, reg. And that's a simple strap system. So that straps over your shoulder and around your tummy. And uh, it's designed to come over, over your right or left shoulder. I think it's over the right shoulder in this case, um, which basically means that it, it keeps it out of the way and it doesn't get tangled up. Some fins, not my normal ones, but some spares. And that's the extra extension, which we shouldn't need but of course could be useful if uh, ever we fail the prop and we need to go a little bit deeper. And that is it. So it's just a case of um, putting this all together and off we go.